The grim aftermath of that deadly fireball that ripped apart a San Francisco suburb last week. As incredible home video and survivor accounts of the blast begin to emerge, residents whose homes were not destroyed began returning, although some are too scared to go back. And that is an uneasiness shared by people across the country who are suddenly very aware and suddenly wondering about the two million miles of natural gas pipeline that crisscrossed the United States. Neil Karlinski is in California with our report. In San Bruno today, people were doing their best to get back to their normal lives. You think electricity will ever get back on? Something that hasn't come easy. The Hanan family came home to a house in pretty good shape today, other than the smell of smoke. The problem is their daughter, like so many others who ran for their lives to get out of here last week, doesn't want to stay here anymore. I feel secure, but she's not. She's not. She's scared. She keeps telling me, I don't want to come home, Mom. I don't want to go home. Just now, she don't want to go inside the house. We just came from the hotel. It's no wonder. What the f happened? This incredible home video was taken by their neighbor, Walter McCaffrey, and gives the closest view yet of the horrific fireball that devoured dozens of homes. The people dead, I know. Damn it. What the f happened? To be honest, I was not thinking. I was just making sure my neighbors were I could see my neighbors running up the hill and I wasn't I was just running around the house making sure everybody was out do you feel safe or still a little not 100 percent not 100 percent the neighborhood which was ravaged by a natural gas fire is now under siege by utility workers going house to house to make sure the gas comes on again safely and there was what some residents considered a less than reassuring sight. Technicians with handheld electronic sniffers checking cracks in the road and manhole covers for more possible gas leaks. Beverly Mandel has lived here since the neighborhood was built a half century ago, but she won't stay the night. Holy cow. Yeah. Thursday's explosion sent that. this meteor-like rock of burning asphalt through her uh, roof. I went upstairs. I was upstairs in my bed bedroom. That, that's still, stuff's uh, that's falling through your roof. Stuff is still falling through, hallelujah. <laughs> Gee. Despite it all, we haven't met anyone in this neighborhood who isn't first and foremost just I'm thankful sure to be alive. Even as longer. Exhibit A, the huge chunk of blown out pipeline, was shipped off their street by investigators today, bound for a lab in Washington. It will literally be put under a microscope. The detailed metallurgical examination will help us determine was it for example, a fatigue fracture where, you know, the pressurization, depressurization bends it back and forth and back and forth until it eventually breaks. Or was it a fracture from impact from excavation or just what was the source of the breach? Initially, NTSB investigators say the pipe has some obvious areas of concern. It is old, installed in 1956, with welding points that officials say are no longer commonly used. That includes a long welded seam that runs the length of the line and is potentially susceptible to corrosion. But there is also a section designed to bend under a dip in the road, the exact section that blew put together by a hodgepodge of smaller pieces. Officials say that while modern methods are to bend a pipe to fit a curve, this pipe was pieced together by small sections called pups, each one forging a turn in the pipe, each one offering investigators another decades-old welding job that could have been a weak point. The fact that it occurred when it was unexpected, when there's no obvious explanation for it. There was no precursor event, there was no earthquake that we know of, there was no uh, heavy construction in the vicinity that we know of. We don't know of any impact against the pipe. Um, it's very mysterious and it makes it important that we understand the cause of this. We've heard reports of residents saying that they smelled gas and called us beforehand. We have combed through our records um, for the, the, the month of September, for the nine days of September before the event, and we have not found any, any, in, anything in our records that would indicate that people called for that specific area. Today, PG&E officials were anxious to defend themselves against reports that residents smelled gas earlier and nothing was done. In one instance, there was a small leak at the meter, which we replaced, fixed it right away. And in the second instance, there, there wasn't a leak found anywhere. State regulators have now ordered the utility to inspect all of its natural gas lines. We already know that will include at least 99 the utility considers high risk. 
That's because the line that blew in San Bruno was one of 100 highest risk line sections in the company's own 2007 report, adding the risk of failure at this location is unacceptably high. Snapshots of the aftermath paint a vivid picture of destruction and loss, the sort of thing you'd be forgiven for thinking you've seen before. But this event is different, and pipelines like the one that caused it are underground, crisscrossing their way through neighborhoods from coast to coast. I'm Neil Karlinski for Nightline in San Bruno, California.